So you want to rig up your character inside of Blender. You've made something, but now you want it to be able to move. Of course you do. So today we're going to go over two very quick ways to do that. The first one is very quick and easy. It's going to be using the Rigify add-on. In case you don't yet have it enabled, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and just type into this little search box, uh, Rigify. You can enable this, and that's everything you need to do. Once that is enabled, uh, using Shift and A, or whatever shortcut you have set for it, obviously, you can add a new armature, basic, and either a human or quadruped. If you're doing a dog or a cat or some kind of animal, uh, you're going to use a quadruped because it's got four legs. Basic human is uh, just what you expect it to be. It's a basic human. So you scale that up to roughly fit with your mesh. Then going to the right-hand side over here, we go to viewport display and choose in front. This way, the bones will always be in front of your mesh so they won't like get lost inside of it and from here you just highlight the meta rig and you go to edit mode and you try to line up the bones as best you can it doesn't have to be very exact but you probably want it to be at least somewhat accurate so let me do this real quick and i'll get back to you once i have everything rigged up now that i have everything lined up more or less. Again, it doesn't have to be very exact necessarily, but you probably want things to look at least like they are overlapping uh, decently well. You go back to this panel over here, the same panel we just used to have our bones show up in front of the mesh. Uh, and after applying the scale, which you do by uh, pressing Ctrl A and then all transforms, uh, I'll show you in a moment why that is important you press Generate Rig. And this will automatically generate a control rig for you. And congratulations, you have just rigged a character. Now, if we go back a couple of steps and we do not apply the scale and we generate a rig, uh, you will see that the rig generates very, very small because it uh, it's using the non-scaled up version of the bones. Highlight the object first and then the rig. This is an important step uh, order. You press Ctrl and P to parent, and you parent with automatic weights. Usually automatic weights are pretty good these days. Uh, you might have to weight paint things manually a little bit. That's the whole of the video though. Uh, so now that things are parented, selecting the rig here, we can actually just hide the uh, bones because we don't need those anymore. Uh, going into pose mode, you'll be able to see that uh, we can move things about and the character is entirely rigged automatically with inverse kinematics as well. That is really the main reason that I would recommend anytime you can use this to use this because it's literally as easy as just lining things up and you've got a full working IK rig. And that's everything you need to do for most human characters you're going to rig. But say you have something that is not human, Sim something weird and um, alien like this. Obviously, a meta rig isn't going to work for this. Rigify isn't going to work here. So let's go over the process of making a custom rig real quick. So let me uh, disable this and enable the uh, base mesh. From there, we can go Add, Shift A. Uh, we go Armature, Single Bone. Now, there's no bones. Remember, we have to go to Object Data Properties, Viewport Display, and enab Enable in front. Now we can see our bone. I'm going to keep this bone in the middle here. I'm going to rotate it downward, lift it up. And from there, it's really just a matter of having the bones roughly follow the mesh, the parts where you want to move it around anyway. So the way you do that is, again, you go into edit mode. You move around this little thing here. From there, we can uh, go E to extrude, Y to lock to the Y axis, and pull it out. But I don't want a second bone here at the moment. Could be useful, but at the moment, I really don't want that. So what we will do is we'll go clear parent by pressing Alt and P, as you can see here. And then we will put the 
bone where we want it to be. So I want it to be over at this tentacle. Uh, we turn it around a little. Uh, we need to raise it up a little bit. And this is a little finicky. Uh, you do need to be constantly changing perspective to make sure that things are lined up properly. If you try to rig the entire thing from just one perspective, I guarantee to you, it's not going to work out too well. We need to reconnect it to this bone. So what we do is we select the bone that we want to parent first. Then secondly, we select the bone that we want to parent to. Pressing Control P and choosing Keep Offset. You will see a little dotted line connecting the two of them, meaning that if I now move this one in pose mode, uh, that is, the other one will move with it. From here, back in edit mode, it's really as easy as just E to extrude, Shift Z to lock to the axis I want it, and uh, just making a couple of extra bones. Uh, do that for every single tentacle, and then obviously, sometimes you have to uh, fine tune and tweak things a little bit. If you do that for every single tentacle here, you will end up with a rig a little something more like this one. Uh, which does have IK controllers on it as well. That's a little beyond the scope of this video right now. We will make a separate video about IK. Just remember, if you want very easily build in inverse kinematics and you have something that looks like a dog or a cat or a human, just use Rigify. It's a really powerful tool and it's all you'll pretty much need for 90% of your models, most likely. If you want custom inverse kinematics, we'll talk about that next time.